Today, I have a step-by-step -step illustrator tutorial where we're going to design a hyper-realistic vector speaker. Now it looks super clean and it's actually probably easier than you think to make. However, it might not be perfect for absolute beginners to Adobe Illustrator, but do follow along and learn some neat techniques and processes for a hyper-realistic speaker. Now for today's vector speaker design, we're going to be working in Adobe Illustrator and I recommend using an RGB document as many of the blur and the gradient effects are going to render a lot better on such a document. I'm personally going to use a artboard of 2000 by 2000 pixels and like I said before I'd use RGB and also 72 ppi for web based graphics. Now we're going to be making the vector speaker using a whole lot of circles but we actually only need to make one circle with the ellipse tool and that is the very first circle. So press L for the ellipse tool and then click and drag whilst holding down shift to generate your circle. Is it just me or do most of my tutorials start with making a circle? But yeah anyway, we're then going to need to add a gradient fill here and the gradient for this first circle is pretty important. I myself am only going to use grayscale for this and that's all done in the gradient window. And you can simply click along the slider to add a new colour. This circle might look a little bit weird or odd at the moment, but do follow along because as we build up the design, the speaker is going to take more shape and a more clean appearance. So lastly for the outer base of the speaker, copy it with command or control C and then paste a duplication right over the top with command or control F. Now to make things a lot easier for you in your workflow, I advise using the layers panel throughout the entire design process. So if you've duplicated the first circle properly, there should be two circles now in the layers panel. And I'm going to go ahead and give them relevant names so things are organized throughout. Now I've made the new circle slightly smaller than the original one by holding down shift and the alt or the option key at the same time and then clicking inward. But on the original circle, which should be the bigger one behind the new one, open the gradient window and then remove most of the colours by clicking and dragging them away, leaving only two colours to make up your gradient. Click the smaller circle and then copy it with command and control C and then paste another duplication with command and control F. Now like before, resize this one down by holding shift and the alt option key at the same time. Press I for the eyedropper tool and carefully sample the gradient from the largest circle that is behind all layers. In the gradient window, we will change the gradient style of this circle to radial instead of linear and then adjust it accordingly. Now the outer base of the speaker is pretty much done for now and rename the layers as you go in the layers window. And we're now going to make an effect that will create the super neat and realistic appearance on the design. So copy and duplicate the new circle like we've done before in the tutorial and then add a colour fill in the palette on the bottom left of your screen and flick the fill over to a stroke. I can actually lock the other three layers in the layers panel by clicking the padlock icon and this is going to help so I don't select these layers throughout the process. On the new circle we've just made, press C for the scissors tool and then click on the left anchor point and then on the right one too. Afterwards, press V for the selection tool and then click the bottom section of your circle to now cut it in half and remove the bottom parts. Change the stroke color over to a white and then apply the same stroke style as I'm going to use under the top drop down menu. This will give the line more thickness in the middle, which is what we want for the effect. Now increase the stroke weight of the line to something similar to mine. You can also press Shift and W on your keyboard to use the Width tool. And this is going to allow you to click and drag to increase or decrease the thickness of your line. 
Now when you have your line ready to go, you can then apply a Gaussian blur effect under the effects menu. Make sure you check the preview box so you can see the changes in real time. And you don't want to add too much of a blur to this part of the design, just the right amount. Now it's just a matter of copying this line with command or control C and then pasting the duplicate. Rotate the duplication by 180 degrees and then position it below. The idea is to position these lines perfectly so it creates a kind of 3D effect illusion making use of highlights around the rim of the speaker itself. I personally played around with the positioning for quite a while and in fact I've adjusted it many times before I completed the design. So that's looking pretty neat and of course you can make sure to unlock the layers again in the layers window and you do that by unchecking the padlock icon. Now we're going to move on to the inner sections of the speaker. So select the innermost circle and then copy it and duplicate it as we've done before. So as we've done before, hold down shift and the alt option key at the same time and then resize this new circle down a little bit from the original. And we're going to keep the gradient style the same, which is a radial gradient. But only this circle is going to have more use of dark greys, almost black in appearance. So in this new circle, I'm going to add an effect that will help the overall design look more realistic at the very end. And to do that, you can open up the appearance panel and then click the effects button here. I'm going to add an outer glow effect, but which uses black as the color for the glow. I want this effect to be quite subtle and not overpowering, so I'm not going to add a huge amount of outer glow. So when you've done that, copy and duplicate the most recent circle, and then again resize it down a tiny bit. However, make sure to open up the appearance panel and then remove the appearance so that the outer glow effect is not active on the new circle. This circle is going to be another blur effect acting as a highlight, so shift the fill over to a stroke and then use quite a thick line for this one. As we previously did, use the scissors tool to cut the circle in half, remove the bottom half and then change the stroke style so the line is thicker in the middle. I am going to add a different effect on this line and that is to click the gradient button on the stroke in the bottom left of the screen and then change the stroke so that both sides of the gradient are white in colour. Using a minus 90 degree orientation for the gradient, I can then go ahead and bring the opacity of one side of the gradient to zero. Now this is going to help blend in the line into your design at each end of the stroke path. So again, naming your layers throughout the entire process is something I suggest you do. And it can be annoying, but it's also really helpful. Okay, so for this line, add a Gaussian blur as we previously did, making sure you didn't add too much of a blur. Repeat the process of copying this line, rotating it 180 degrees, and then positioning it below. So as you can see, the speaker is taking some nice shape, but copy the most recent circle and then duplicate it with command or control F. Resize it down again, and then come into the gradient window. Change the gradient from a radial over to a linear, as we want the circle to go from a light grey at the bottom to a darker grey at the very top. But don't make the dark grey too dark, as that's going to blend it into the background and we don't want that to happen.
Now you can spend some time repositioning your blend highlights and changing their opacity as they are crucial to making the final design look hyper realistic and clean. And I personally spent quite a while doing this off of camera. So okay, we're going to now add some colour to the vector speaker. So copy and duplicate the smallest circle. And if it has a blur around the edge, clear the appearance in the appearance panel. Now this next step is a bit tricky, but it's essential to get a nice colour gradient on your speaker. So, follow along step by step. Make sure the circle is only a stroke in the colour palette and that the stroke is a gradient. Now open the gradient window and use a radial gradient seen here. But also use the apply a gradient along the stroke setting here too. Now we're going to make a custom gradient and it's absolutely essential that both ends of the gradient have the exact same colour. Now I'm going to make a dark, almost gold or brown colour at both ends. But the important step here is to come into the RGB settings and copy the hex colour code with command or control C. Now the colours in between the two ends of the slider can be lighter in colour, but make sure to paste in the colour code on the other side of the gradient with command or control V. Now because we use the apply a gradient along the stroke setting, watch what happens when I jack up the stroke weight of the circle. Now as you can see we have a very neat and realistic metallic appearance, and that is achieved by having each side of the gradient the exact same colour. Now resize it down and we're ready for the final steps in today's tutorial. Now copy the colour circle and paste in a duplicate and then scale it down ever so slightly smaller and then rotate it around a little bit. This will give a nice edge to this part of the vector speaker design. Now if you have any rendering issues on your screen, don't worry, that's most likely just on the screen. But when you export the design as say a JPEG, you're not going to be able to see that as long as you have both ends of the gradient the same hex colour code. You can always expand the appearance of these colour shapes so that they remain the same size at any scale. So as you can see guys, the vector speaker is looking super clean and also neat, but let's finish it off. Locate the layer that is the thick black border and then copy it and duplicate it. Then bring the duplication to the front of all layers and by holding down both the Alt Option key and Shift, resize it down something like mine. You should have the outer glow effect on this duplication and that's good because we want to add that here too. Now duplicate this layer by copying it and pasting it over the top. But you're going to want to remove the appearance of this layer as it also has the outer glow effect on it. Now turn the circle over to a white stroke only, and I'm going to skip forward to save us some time today. But you just need to repeat the process of cutting the circle in half, adding a Gaussian blur, like we've actually done twice in today's tutorial. If you've been following along, you should know how to do that by now. Also, I've added a circle here with a linear gradient, light grey at the top and dark grey at the bottom, and again, you should know how to do that by now. Finally, I'm going to copy this circle and remove any appearance on it in the appearance panel. Resize the new circle down and then make sure it has a dark appearance. 
it needs to be a tiny bit smaller than the original one and then copy this circle again but distort its shape to an oval because this is going to be the final touch of a blur highlight. This gradient goes from light at the top to dark at the bottom so that it blends in nicely. And then go ahead and add a Gaussian blur to the oval which is going to represent the highlight in the middle of the speaker. And actually I've decided to remove the inner grey circle in the middle here because I feel it looks better without it. But yeah, there you go guys, one hyper-realistic vector speaker design in Adobe Illustrator. I know this tutorial has been somewhat more advanced for some of you out there, but if you do follow along step by step, um, pause it and then go back when you need to, you can probably end up with a decent looking design, whatever your skill level in Illustrator. If you want more content just like this video today, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, like and share my videos on social media if you want to help out my channel. And until next time, design your future today. Peace.